Bradley, uh, how do you feel about the ending thing? Yeah. yeah. Uh, as far as like the, the importance of endings, um, at first I was kind of in the, whenever I, at the time I asked the question, I was kind of in the same camp as you guys where it's like, as long as the story has like something in it that I can get value out of, like something in it that was really good. I'm like, you know what? I can like the work as a whole. Even good. if the ending itself isn't that good. Yeah. Um, and then around the time I was thinking that, I remembered Pet Cemetery. <laughs> and I was oh, like, you yeah. know what? I guess on some level, it is really nice for the ending to be like a culmination of like the themes and plot melding together that, of the book up to that, that point, which that's... Pet Cemetery's ending was not. <laughs> that that is fascinating because y'all you guys were super into it uh up until that ending. Did it it really hurt that bad in the end? It, like Pet Cemetery was like a four out of five for me up until the ending and then it became like a two or two point five out of five. Yeah, yeah that's pretty heavy. Like, probably I talked about when we talked about it together. It was like parts one and two are just some of the most nerve wracking, like kind of like you're like oh my god oh like, yeah like you literally like Bradley and I were having ex- existential crisis about death and people around us kind of thing yeah like it really got us thinking and like it, it kind of the book kind of gives you an existential crisis and then the very end he's like bad it'd be so scary if there was like a demon baby who cussed you out <laughs> <laughs> um that's so. I was going to say it's like, oh, but I mean, if the journey there is so good, it shouldn't impact you that bad. But the journey there was that good and it still impacted you. So it's like, yeah, there there are levels of how hard you can drop the ball. And I think that's an important equation. I think the reason the ending made me so sad is like I felt like Stephen King didn't know why his own book was as good as it was. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I guess I can relate because then also Game of Thrones season eight made me not like Game of Thrones as a franchise anymore. It was that. Yeah, that's severe. the thing is I was, I was sitting here and I was like, oh, and it, like you don't have to have a good ending. And then I I was able to think of like one example where I was like, well, the ending. I, I stand kind of by, like... I, I still stand by you don't have to. Yeah. Because like I said, a lot of like JoJo's part five and seven both have examples where it's like. That didn't ruin anything for me. Yeah, like part five was it's still really good action. So yeah. maybe it's just a testament to how bad that particular ending was. Yeah, it must well, be I a think, case by case. I think the big thing is too is you have to have an ending that feels like it actually tried and not something that just kind of ended, you know? Because Game yeah. of Thrones doesn't didn't feel like it tried at the end there. Yeah. Like, oh, that's a good point. That's a really and, good point. And Stephen King will write a couple he'll write a few hundred pages and then he'll get bored of the book and he's like oh god how do i end this as fast yeah <laughs> like like pet cemetery felt like it didn't it, like pet cemetery could have ended with um like the kid grabbing the scissors and then maybe stabbing the dad and i would have been happy with it i would have thought that would have been a better ending because yeah honestly <laughs> yeah because like he's created a monster like and he gets paid for it but like the ending uh, but yeah, um... maybe a part of it is how how much the story relied on building plot threads to the ending. Because at least in the case of something like JoJo's, you're getting all these mini arcs that have a contained ending within your part. So maybe that's why if only one of them drops the ball, you can move on. And I'm trying to think of like another. Yeah, because like each arc is kind of like a sub story, whereas. Mm-hmm. Well, when you're when five. you're reading a novel like that, you are building up to like one ending. Yeah, yeah. it. I'm, an exa- I I think a lot of people don't like the lost ending. I wish I could weigh in on that because I also I do like the lost ending. I'm, I'm a yeah, fucking weirdo. You've gotten to do specifically lost on the podcast before. Like I think you've talked about it in passing when we talk about other stuff. I I yeah I. I'm trying to think of something because JoJo's is a specific case where, like I said, it has those things. I'm trying to think of a bad ending. Well, oh, um, what about something like uh, I've never played Demon Souls, right? But Demon Souls is like the lamest final boss ever, from what I hear. But I'm sure a lot of people would still say 
that the game is good that have played it. So I'm sure there's a lot of video games with bad endings mm -hmm. that you can get behind because the journey, like, it was a fun game. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure I could think, oh, uh, fucking, uh, the, one of the Kingdom Hearts, I'm sure, it has, like, a bad the first ending. first Kingdom Hearts when you have to fight a boat. <laughs> nah, that's fucking rad. No, it's not. It's Maybe maybe what, what how, how three handles Xehanort, but I'm still like I still enjoy three so I mean, something like that. Was fun, but yeah. like was badass. Yeah, I'm trying. Yeah, this is a lot of uh, good Star Wars talk. I, I might segment this into its own little four minute talk <laughs> thing. Yeah, I, I mean, if I had any more endings to think about, I would bring them up. But yeah, it's a complex question. I. Yeah, I think in terms of like game endings, like there, I know an inverse of one. Like Mass Effect Ooh. One, Mass Effect One was such a slog to get through. Like I, I, I literally played that game so I could like transfer the save over to Mass Effect Two and so forth. And I played the entire that game, and I just despised it. Like it just it did not feel good to play. I love the ending to that game. I think what's that... What's ironic is if you keep following that thread, Mass Effect Three is apparently really fun to play, and then the ending ruins the franchise. Yeah. <laughs> so. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, There's so many variables, I guess. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is your ending has to feel like it was trying to make a point. You know. Yeah. Like, yeah. and and the thing in the case of Steel Ball Run, we have our climactic and final point. Oh, with the climax Val is S tier. So yeah. Ooh, yeah. With Valentine, we just have to finish the race at this point, and and the worst you could have done is like. And it, it wasn't even that bad, to be fair. Yeah, it, it really wasn't. It just felt like, oh, now we're doing this now. Um, and then it ended, and and even then, like the very last like section of it, where like after Dio's died and Johnny can walk in, is have he's reminiscing about his whole journey. It still feels satisfying. Like mm -hmm. he he made it to his goal. He crossed his finish line. You know, so that's why it feels good because the point got across. You know, this happens in movies a lot. I feel like, and is i'm trying to i, I, I feel oh, age of ultron is a movie that i defend a lot and i feel like a lot of coming back to age of ultron it all comes back to this it, every every topic comes back to <laughs> fucking age of ultron take a shot every time we talk about age of ultron no we uh we've done it twice I mean, we, yeah we, we've definitely talked about it a couple times bradley what if i hate the ending of worm that might actually break me. That'd be terrifying. That that might break me because that is a time investment. Guys, what if the ending of One Piece sucks? Like, dude, don't even don't. I think I think One Piece is at the point where like I don't think the ending could like ruin that entire series. It like, it could for some people, and it like maybe it not me because we've talked about how much we like every individual arc so much, but like <laughs> it's. It's a lot of threads building up to one ending, so I don't know. That's the thing is like that it it is a daunting task. It's like how do you end such like a saga that has like honestly influenced culture so much? Like I'm at the point where I like I don't know. I'm only like maybe a third through One Piece, if even that. You're not even through the halfway mark of the first half of the book. Yeah, <laughs> you're you're at twenty five percent, but yeah, yeah. And like I don't know at this. I'm at the point where I'm like, I just can't see something in One Piece sucking. Of course, <laughs> I haven't experienced as much as you guys, but you haven't gotten to the next arc yet, which is oh the my most god, I can't wait! For... I can't, I can't wait for Bradley to like it, and then I will feel vindicated. Yeah, so that is is that the one where you guys have like the the polarized? It's uh, uh not not you guys. It's me versus the rest of the One Piece fan base. <laughs> But oh, maybe you'll but, join me on the hill. But I'm also, pretty... that arc might be the most important arc for an arc coming up later in the series. Maybe. You never know. So, we don't know. <laughs> All I know is, Oda knows what the fuck he's doing. Yeah. But anyways, endings, you should at least try. If it's, like, if it's bad or good, it's like, whatever. But if you try, it's gonna be fine. Speaking of endings, Bradley, how are we ending this podcast? Are we ending it strong and vindicating the whole podcast or are we ending it weak and ruining the whole podcast we go wake up the members of my nation give us give us your hypothetical bradley that's what i was actually trying to get you to do oh shit i was really hoping you weren't asking me to do that <laughs> i super was i never think of them anymore <laughs> so i'm never ready you want to do mine from today 
Uh, yeah, actually, that's a good one. Uh, and you can join us down in the comments. Please um, do. So basically, uh, you have a time. You you have the ability to go back in time, and you can change one historical event or personal event. I don't care. Um, however, you are not to allow. You are not allowed to harm or kill anybody, and the action you do cannot indirectly harm someone as well. Like you can't like knock down a building, and I didn't harm anyone, but the building happened to kill Hitler. You can't do that. So S- Spencer's answer of c- cock blocking Hitler does not count. No, that counts because he's not harming Hitler. He's just cock blocking the dead. I mean, but then Hitler's not born. But that's not killing Hitler. That's just not unbirthing him. Hitler. Uh, <laughs> that's a viable one. My go-to. It's like. So do I get full control to just straight up change it, or do I have to like use my words to f- change? Um, you can do whatever you want. Uh, well, that's tougher. Yeah, Bradley, what you got? We're also not um, the effect here. It's just like the Joe effect. Like you just prevent that one thing, and everything else of happens. Course. You know that uh that Banksy painting where it was sold at the auction, and then the frame of the painting like shreds it yeah i would go to the auction and right before that happens i would be like i will use my psychic powers to shred this million dollar painting (laughs) and then it happens that everyone would be like whoa and then they see that it was actually the frame that did it and i don't know that was it would probably be fun for about 30 seconds (laughs) i bet a lot of humans would be happy if i changed the ending of game of thrones somehow if there was a way to do it. <laughs> but, you know, I could also save MLK. No, you know what, Willard? Willard, here's what you do. You I, could, make... I could save a president. I don't know. You No, you could you could say that season 7 and season 8 have 10 episodes each. Oh, shit. Ah, but they didn't care at the time. I have to convince... Okay, okay, here's what I change. Uh, I go back in time and I make sure that I write the whenever wild Bo was making pitches for tv shows for worm i would make myself the head of that somehow and then we would live in a world where we would be at we would have the worm tv show and everyone just would think happy. like it's crazy to me that he's already talked to like plural studios but he's so protective of it that he because like they maybe i tell that guy to change the line from take that you worm to like normal line <laughs> like some of the people who have talked to him actually had like huge changes that i can get while wild bill wouldn't want it but there are some of those guys he could have negotiated with <laughs> uh joe it, how do you how do you save the world here's what i do actually no i i can't because i know <laughs> I, I know the answer to this question, and I, I can't do it because it's just mean. So I'm not going to answer this question. Oh, no. oh is this a super personal? Yeah, it's a super Ooh. personal thing. Yeah, yeah like my you. actual answer would probably be a personal thing, but uh, Riley yeah, and Willard would probably hate me forever, and Tyler if I ever told them. So I'm well, not. Fuck. Gonna... What the fuck? This affects me. Fuck you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> what is anyway. this? Hold on, I gotta know. He would go back and stop us from coming to Disney World with. I just, I just made my penis bigger, basically. That, oh, you, cool. That's not a thing. Like, there's no point in time in which a decision was made that made your penis smaller. As far as I know. <laughs> I'll go no, back. No, he's saying you guys would hate him for it because then you have to deal with his big penis. No, but I'm saying that in this context of this question, there's no way to make your penis bigger, Joe. <sighs> You're right. Unless you go back, it's like, no, I'm not finishing that joke. Uh, thanks, thanks for listening to the Roundabout cast, everyone. Okay, I have a special announcement. The, f- oh, shit. <laughs> the first person to email the roundaboutcast at gmail.com gets to have exclusive rights to join our Discord server as the first member. So uh, send us a question. I'm literally bribing you all at this point. Please, we're lonely. Okay, thanks, bye.